Welcome to End User Input. This week, we're covering a lot of tech stuff. Let's yeah. talk about Destiny and its fabulous release this week to some really awesome numbers, but awesomer gameplay. <laughs> Let's go to the two people who have actually played the game, Garrick and Jason. <laughs> so I have really enjoyed it so far. Um, I'm level 15. Um, which is what's the level cap even? Um, current level cap is uh, tw the level cap is twenty, yeah. but not really because apparently there's other levels you can get after that that are like motes of light. So there's like a secondary leveling system after level cap. So it's not really capped at level. Yeah, 20. I was thinking. Um, not to mention the fact that you can like level your gear yeah. and subclasses independently. Yeah. So. It's there's like 50 different things you yeah. can level. So level cap really doesn't mean. Well, anything. that's what I thought. It was thought it was more level 20 for equipment and then kind of just floaty from there. Yeah, so the level caps are kind of weird, but yeah, I've put in probably about I'm looking at about 15 hours of gameplay yeah. so far. I'm level 17. Uh, so I've explored most of the stuff. I think I'm probably about halfway to 70 percent done with the story yeah. and it is an excellent game the gunplay feels spot on it's it's been a ton of fun i've been playing with a couple of my friends and the co-op aspects and like the random encounters that you get with like rare enemies and the public events everything has just been a really fun fun experience to play so i i personally think it lived up to the hype uh i'm sure some people out there don't but <laughs> I've really been enjoying it so yeah, far. Yeah, um, I, I, so, what, go, Savannah? <laughs> no, you can go ahead, Garrick. Okay, um, basically, I, I almost think that they didn't have to go for a high $500 million budget. Like, I don't see that as really needed, because I've seen games come out with lower budgets, and they're at the same caliber, so I'm kind of like... Yeah, okay. you have Most to remember they they had to buy a bunch of servers and stuff to to cater to the much larger online aspect of this yeah, game too. Yeah. So that's definitely part of it. But a lot of that five hundred million budget was for marketing. It was actually Activision's marketing budget for the yeah. game, which is kind of cool because it gave us, in my opinion, a really cool like live action trailer and some really really good advertisements. But I think I it was like a bit trailer. overkill because I mean, even though. Activision was the publisher. It's a Bungie game. People know Bungie, Bungie from obviously Halo and then like Marathon and stuff back yeah. in the day. They're a well-known company that has a track record of making really good, really popular games. So I don't think they needed to throw that much marketing money behind it, but it did. Ri it seems it paid off when they've sold about 500 million copies on day 500 million dollars worth on day one on day yeah, they've, one they've already so hit profit so it, it's like yeah they're everything from now on is profit so it worked i don't think it was necessary i think they could have been profitable on day yeah. one if they would have cut it back a little bit instead of having everything after day one be yeah. profit but still i mean you're not really going to complain when everything after the first day is definitely profit. like that's not a big deal um but yeah, I, I really liked no, um, yeah. the AI, actually. The AI is what I'm really happy about and what they did very well in. Because um, it, it, it's kind of like how Halo used to be, where Legendary was kind of like really hard to get through, so you had to play with cover, and you had to kind of make sure that you weren't losing your shields very quickly. And I feel yeah. it's very similar to that, which I love. Yeah, I'd agree. Uh, the uh, AI has been really um, that all the all the different enemies were gonna seem very against them, and so far every different race of enemy has been a completely different experience, which I've yeah really enjoyed. Every time I encountered a new race of enemy, I was surprised by like what they could do and the different things. Like, there's a race like normally you're in shooters, you're conditioned to go for headshots because yeah. headshots are the critical, and there's a race where it doesn't do anything to them the headshots don't matter there's different weak yeah. points and yeah it is um and is, so there's just really cool um, things is that, that the like, vex even though that seems really yeah. small okay. it definitely changes up changes up 
what you're conditioned to do in a shooter. So it makes things really interesting. So I've really liked just small touches like that so far that have really made the game enjoyable for me, as well as all of the stuff that they hyped up, like the random encounters and the public events yeah. and stuff like that. That's cool. all been great as well. Yeah. So it seems like some people were really concerned about the always online element of it. Um, um, it has you, has mine. that affected your guys' gameplay at all? Um, yeah, I haven't had um, any problems with not it. Not on I've my seen, end. Uh, some of the people that I follow <laughs> on Twitter having some issues with it. Uh, apparently, there's a small subset of people that are getting server issues, and they're so they're not able to join. It's a pretty small amount of people, but it's definitely affecting some people. Uh, one of the main issues they've had so far is it has um, people on college campuses or like that are on college campus internet are having really difficult times just getting online and staying online. So there's some sort of issue with just the way the college uh, network is set up. But Bungie has already come out and been like, hey, we're aware that this is an issue. We're compiling a list of things that you can give to like the administrator of your network uh, that will help you get past this. So your server is actually taking a really forward approach with it be like hey we're yeah. going to tell you everything you need to do to make that not be a problem and then you can just give that to the people in charge and they can fix it for you which has been really cool i'm glad that they were that forward with fixing that issue which is of oh. course assuming that you know college administrators actually do anything in a timely matter <laughs> yeah i mean what i think it is is mostly like the administrators of like if you're in a dorm room yeah they have like a different network that people are on i think the people there will be more willing to make these changes than like if you were actually trying to have (laughs) your college network administrator for the actual (laughs) college campus make these changes so you could play destiny he would laugh you out of his office but the people at the dorms i think will be willing to kind of work with that yeah because it is kind of like their space um yeah so it's kind of that's been i can see why they would want to fix it yeah and one could hope that the the administrators would want to you know play Destiny just as badly as everyone else. So. Yeah, there's probably several yeah. of those that are like, yeah, yeah, tell me what I need to fix and I'll fix it. But yeah, so far that's been the biggest issue with the the game that I've seen is just the college campus issue. Uh, there's been a small subset of people who've had issues with always online and then there's the people on metacritic who bitch about stuff that they (laughs) obviously didn't pay attention to before the game came out or just want the game to fail because they're like oh i hate activision or i hate triple a titles only indie titles should be considered good there's a ton of people doing that bullshit on metacritic but metacritic is a useless website in the first place so yeah i don't really care what they why do you look i i found it surprising that they actually released a uh last gen um copies yeah i was like go ahead i i kind of felt that this would have been a game where people were like okay i'm gonna buy the new system like i feel that that could have been a catalyst to buy new consoles which for xbox it was because they gave it out for free basically um that's true with the buy the console get one game for free oh by the way one of those games yeah destiny yeah and it's just kind of like I see that they did that, but I don't know why they would even put it on the old systems. Like, I've seen screenshots, and it looks terrible. It doesn't look as bad as well, I expected it to look on the previous gen consoles. It obviously isn't as good as the current gen, um, yeah. but I was a little surprised, too, because it could have been a system seller for them, I think, but uh, it's kind of just like, yeah. hey, we you know have to you remember, guys... too, that the... What was that? The... the... <laughs> You have to remember the the guys at Bungie now don't give a shit what it's being played on. They just want everyone who they can get playing it, playing it. Yeah. So I think it was actually a brilliant move on their part. It definitely because is, with how the it's yeah definitely going to lead to more games sold. I think if they didn't have to spend time in development on the last gen hardware, they might have been able to polish current gen a little bit more. Um, that's not to say that it's not polished. It's phenomenal. Uh, it's got amazing graphics that I would consider next gen. They're obviously not going to be the next gen we're looking at in a year to two's time on this hardware. Yeah. And they're obviously not going to match what you could get on a high end PC. Uh, but they're really good graphics and it's in kind of the lighting details and the texture details that you really see it. Um, so 
they probably could have improved that a little bit if they hadn't well, de developed for the older consoles, but it's still really great as far as that goes. Uh, but I do think yeah. it could have been a system seller if they would have just been like, nope, old consoles, we're not making it for them, it's only the new ones, go buy a new console. I think they would have got a lot of people to buy yeah. new consoles. Yeah. Well, that said, I, I, I actually don't think it really took that much more time and resources to... Uh, to get it on the old consoles, the, the PS3 maybe just because its architecture is weird. Yeah. But as far as yeah. under the hood, the only real change between like what's going on under the hood, uh, the 360 and the Xbox One, is the graphics engine. Everything yeah. else, like, it it's yeah, it, all just yeah. yeah. So it's basically it's a like, PC. Yeah, it is. It's more like this. PC. The the infrastructure of the system is nearly the same. So. Hardware really doesn't age like it used to. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I agree with that. That's, that's I mean, true. It, so far, great it's game. Still... Really happy I picked it up day one. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Well, let's move on to our next topic then, uh, which a lot has been going on lately regarding net neutrality. Um, you know, obviously the uh, petition to the the... the uh, public comments that the FCC was allowing the, uh, you know, obviously there, it's been in the news quite a bit lately, but most recently, you know, the declaration that, uh, what, 10, meg 10 megs is too fast for broadband? Yeah, uh, that's what AT&T and Verizon have been saying is 10 megabits <laughs> is too fast for broadband. Most consumers won't use that. That's ridiculous to try and require us to provide that. And I just have <laughs> even, to shake my Even head. though... Uh, yeah, on the same like on the report I read, they brought up that that just for Netflix, their recommended bandwidths are like for just and this is just for standard TV now. It's five megabits per second for 720, which is now television standard, or seven megabits per second for 1080p, and it's just like. Yeah, four is not enough. Yeah, because that's one. Well, you also got to say what's on the books. So if they say you're getting billed for 10 megabits per second, you're actually usually getting seven. You yeah. Know, if that. Yeah. So yeah. that's one other thing. Yeah. I, that, that up to is uh, misleading. Yeah. I used to I used to work for Verizon Tech Support and they only promise that they will deliver 80 percent of the speed that you pay for. So if you pay for 10 megabit per second, they only promise you'll get eight. And that's only through hardwired directly into a single computer they only promise yeah. that you'll get that um so you'll only they only have to provide you 80 percent of what you pay for but you still pay for all of it so that's kind of yeah bullshit. And, that, and that's exactly what it says in the the contracts and everything too yeah so well and another thing a lot of this uh a lot of this resistance to to upping this is because then you'll probably get more people wanting faster internet you know because oh the definition of broadband well we want broadband you know more and more data means you have to have more uh it, you know better infrastructure better better ser uh, better servers more lines like the thing is with any of this uh c communication stuff the maintenance really isn't too bad as far as i know i mean it's it's the laying of new lines it's the building more infrastructure that sucks so i mean like you look at our telephone system everything i mean all that is a, like a hundred thousand years old, you know, because <laughs> it, because it costs it, the profit margins are so great to just keep doing what you're doing because you got to keep the keep the lights on and repair the an occasional down line or or someone you know digs up something, and that's it. But to lay new stuff that doesn't pay for itself. I I mean it do, it would pay for itself, but I guess they just don't like doing that. I don't know. Yeah, they they don't like spending money. Well, yeah, yeah I had um when I was uh I had a business connection. I think it was with uh I don't remember what company was it was with, but they we had, had been getting terrible speeds for just months and months and months until finally we just couldn't get any connectivity at all. And it turned out that our our underground line had completely rusted through. It's just they didn't want to lay new cable to replace it. <laughs> yeah, and it, that's yeah, until it finally just broke mm -hmm. completely. And that's Which why happened we're, to God. It's that's not why we're still not stuck on copper networks is because fi fi fiber is the 
infrastructure that we're going to need for the future. It just mm -hmm. is. We can yeah. deliver better on oh, copper than we are right now, but we need fiber. But companies don't want to roll out fiber because they don't want to spend the money to, to do that because it would cost yeah. them a fair amount of money. It wouldn't bankrupt them by any means. They'd still oh, be no. profitable, uh, but they don't want to be less profitable than they currently are. And yeah. it's... Well, why give people more for the same price ever? Yeah. I mean, it's just not a smart business decision. If you can get them, pay, if you can get them paying fifty dollars a month for except whatever for, service they're getting, it's not smart business to give people more for less. Usually, but with technology, technology advances at such a rate that you should be getting more for less. Yeah, definitely. And, and they're starting to run into troubles now where people are starting to expect more. Because, I mean, it's now it's common knowledge that, you know, Japan's infrastructure, like their slowest Internet in a lot of the metropolitan areas is faster than our fastest Internet. And it even says statistically from Comcast that, you know, almost half of their membership is on 50 megabits per second or more. And yeah. so it's like people want the higher speeds. In a lot of cases, they need the higher speeds. Yeah. But these companies want to charge as much for those higher speeds as humanly possible, which means they need to keep their lowest speeds as low as possible so they can have that bigger yeah. margin. And we've like, whereas if they have to have their lowest capped yeah. higher now, people are going to be like, well, why would I pay $100 for... 50 megabits when I could pay $20 for 10 and 10 will get me by. Yeah. Well, you know? and, and we've seen any place where actual competition rolls out, mostly like Google fiber everywhere that's been uh, installed uh, Comcast and time Warner and AT&T, they all have increased their speeds and dropped their prices. And so that shows you that those companies, all those companies have essentially been, uh, not competing with each other like they've had an anti-competition thing which is basically price fixing which is ridiculously illegal but nobody seems to care about that so far but we've been able to see that that's the case and even the fcc uh chairman tom wheeler who has gotten tons of money from people like comcast and time warner and would normally not say anything to go against them even he came out recently and was like Hey, as far as broadband goes, there basically isn't competition in the majority of the United States. And he points out the fact that anywhere we see actual competition happen, speeds go up, uh, quality of service goes up, the actual line quality goes up where they take care of it and make sure your traffic is uh, treated properly and your prices go down. And yeah. that's the problem is that we're now realizing oh, that all these companies that provide us Internet have essentially been price fixing and making sure that they just rake in as much money as possible. And they didn't give a shit about us as the consumer. Have you? Yeah, definitely. Have you any of you guys seen um, the piece that John Oliver did on this, the his uh, last week tonight piece on it, where he I kind of essentially goes over the history of the FCC? No, I haven't seen it. Yet, no. no. OK, so that would be a no. <laughs> It's definitely worth watching because it does, it actually, he kind of specifically calls out each company and how they've laid out their turf. They haven't been competing with each other. They've essentially divided the country yeah. up into pieces. So, you know. And that, that's actually exactly the comment that I was going to make is that they pretty much, everyone staked their claim to the farmland and everyone really, it's like, as long as no one bugs anyone else, they just keep reaping the profits <laughs> and it's like everyone's happy you know i mean it's, it's kind of nice though because that means that google gets to just walk in like the big jock in the leather jacket and say i've upped my game so up yours fuckers see yeah. and i'm scared that google is the one uh doing forcing this competition because see if if no if they don't catch on fast enough there's uh, Google scares me in so many ways, and the fact though, <laughs> and the fact that they already have their tendrils controlling pretty much most of the uh, uh, the knowable internet, because most people only know the internet through Google, yeah. and they've got all this control of all the data online, all the conversations and everything. But then if they extend their control to the physical links. That scares me that they have control of not only the stuff on the links, but the physical links themselves. But that's that's scary to me. That is kind of that's scary. That's kind a paranoia. Of. That, that said, at least they they want to make sure you get it at decent speeds. Yeah, they they kind of are scary. Not because of anything they've really done so far. They've done a couple of questionable things, but it's because of 
what they have the potential to do if they want to. Yeah. Um, but with Google, I don't think they really care if people get their Google Fiber internet. They just want to make everybody have faster internet because with Google services, they need people to have faster internet to use their services more. And their services yeah. is how they harvest data for their ads and how they get their money. So that's what they want. They want faster yeah, internet so people will use their services. If they do that through Google Fiber, then good. They get more money that way. If they do it through somebody else, that's fine. They're still going to get their money off of their ad revenue and all the other stuff that Google does. That's what yeah. they really want is the better infrastructure because then people can use their stuff uh, to a better degree. Well, and one more thing about Google. Um, the fact that, like you mentioned earlier about uh, the fact that it's a fundamentally different thing they're using. I mean, with like a lot of uh, ADS, uh, excuse me, ADSL links that people use, use now the, you know last mile stuff they use telephone lines for the last mile connection to the actual uh client house but they still use fiber for a lot of their backbone stuff now the fact that google is trying to extend that fiber more towards the neighborhoods as far as i understand it's great because like you were saying optical data transmission is the only way to go for for new for new stuff because the beauty of it is to get like there is uh if, if you know anything about um, if you know anything about information theory and there there there's something called Shannon's theorem which I think is what it's called where it talks about the theoretical maximum amount of data you can push through any specific link through any given time and if you look at uh, optical stuff it doesn't really have the same sort of problems I mean you can keep upping the the amount of data you can push through that link just by changing the uh, devices that are interpreting and transmitting the data through the optical it's connection. Exactly. Yeah. Be you know, and so that right there, the fact that they don't have to lay new lines to, oh, by the way, instead of going from one gig per second, we're giving you 10. And we don't have, you know, it's like... And all you have to do is replace the modem and replace what's yeah, sending yeah. it. That's the great yeah. thing and with that fiber, is, is that you don't have to lay new lines if you need faster speed. You just... Oh, here's a new box at this end. Here, we'll mail you a new box. Oh, congrats. You now went from one gigabit to 10 gigabits, and you got a box that cost like 50 to $100. Yeah. Okay. So net neutrality sucks. <laughs> well, no, no, no. Net, net neutrality is good. The oh, people against sorry. net neutrality yeah. no, is people good. Uh, that that is neutrality. Net neutrality. <laughs> cable companies suck is what I'm thinking. I yes. just... Yes. Yeah. I'm just companies. trying to sum up your words without... <laughs> I, I'm trying to libel you, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> so net neutrality... Yeah. No. <laughs> no, net neutrality is great. Um, I'm not hired oh. by the cable company. I'm not a shill or anything. Yeah. yeah. That, that said, yeah. this I, last story we talked about, like, Netflix is, it like, without Netflix, we owe it to them a little bit because they kind of got the conversation on net neutrality started by paying Comcast an obscenely large amount of money. But... We can finally like Netflix again because they just joined the, uh, one of the big net neutrality protest groups like yeah. against the cable companies. Net so. Netflix I've always been like a little undecided on because they've always stood against paying the companies for faster access to their network, but they did it anyways. So they were for net neutrality, but they still paid the companies. And it's like, well, you're just telling them that it's going to work if they try and bully you into paying for it. But I'm, yeah. they have been lead, kind of leading a push now where they're like, hey, do you, the reason why your Netflix sucks is because Verizon's network's congested. They had to yeah. stop doing that because Verizon filed this uh, cease and desist. But still, uh, they've been doing things like that to let people know, hey, this is the problem. <clears throat> well, and it's just like, it's like they, I think the big reason why they finally really came out and started pushing much harder now, like over the last week, I've heard a lot is because with these companies now wanting to say, no, faster broadband is bad. Like, like we were saying, Netflix doesn't work on a four megabit per second connection. Yeah, so it's literally their livelihood at stake now. Yeah. Well, and if you That's have it, if you buying, if you're purchasing a 10 megabit per second, link, getting 7.5 watching a high-definition Netflix movie, and, oh, by the way, your kid's trying to do his homework in the other room and screws up your TV. It's like, yeah, that's great if only one person's trying to do one thing yeah. on that link. And that's broadband. Yeah. That's too fast for broadband. Uh, yeah. 
don't know. So <sighs> that was great in 1995. But well, I mean, you know, that's the thing is, <laughs> Luckily, in 1995, you didn't need internet. It was awesome to have, but it wasn't as much a lifeblood thing to our economy to our livelihood as yeah. it was back then i mean it, the internet expanded so fast that before you knew it you know these cable companies had a stranglehold on one of the most important factors in american life i oh, mean who old wouldn't old. try and rip you off you know yeah yeah well and really it's the communication of information in any sense is just important i mean before you know, before the internet, you had mainly uh, telephones for long distance communication right. for, you know, and it would just spread person to person. But, you know, that became such a had to have thing that everyone had a phone everywhere you go. There'd be courtesy phones. I think the same thing with internet. I mean, it's not so much a privilege anymore. It should be a right information when it's when the world pretty much requires it now. Yeah. And that's. Uh, in in twist of irony with all this FCC crap, the the U.S. government overall is actually taking that stance. It's just you know their committees that are in charge of that are kind of ass backwards at the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. <sighs> but well, luckily I saw I can't remember the article, but uh, during the comment period uh, on the FCC thing for net neutrality, um, they got swarmed with comments and apparently like i said i can't find the article i'll try and find it so we can show it to everybody but apparently less than one percent of the comments given during the comment period were against net neutrality so that's amazing news uh that that many people really understand oh, really why net neutrality is necessary and were not just understand it but that they actually took the time to tell the fcc hey we need net neutrality so that was a really big deal. Uh, so hopefully the FCC will be listening and paying Never attention. Never is kind of a response. <clears throat> yeah. Um, today, as uh, September tenth, um, they did a huge push um, to get uh, the slowdowns and everything removed, and not even like a thing. Um, so Netflix, uh, Reddit, Tumblr, um, so many other websites were on this thing, and basically. A lot of the big ones. FCC has been swamped. Um, they actually took down their website again. And Congress has been getting calls for just like hours. So it, it, it's a really big thing. And a lot of people are getting in on it. So I don't see it changing. But I, I, I it's still up for debate. Well, that said, you have to remember the way the FCC works is that... Um, like after this this period of talking, yeah. they can basically do whatever the hell they want. Yeah. And then it's up to other parties to say, no, bullshit, you can't do that. So we'll see. Like, yeah. I, I don't think it'll rule against net neutrality, especially with all of the backlash. See, yeah. But we have to keep in mind, it is still a possibility. Yeah, it's the FCC. So this fight doesn't end yeah. until they rule. You're right. And then oh, it might man. not end then. Because, yeah, they can do whatever we'll they want, goes, but I guess. with that many people speaking out against it, I think they realize that there will be a hell of a backlash if they do. Because some things are oh, split, yeah. so the FCC can kind of be like, oh, well, we decided this was the best option based on the comments we got and our personal del deliberation. With this issue, they're not going to be able to use that as a cover because everybody was so overwhelmingly in favor of net neutrality and against like the internet fast lanes. Well, that's the hope. In any case, don't stop the fight. We will put links down below for like to join groups. Do it. Oh, wow. Absolutely. Um, when does the ruling right. go through? I don't so, quite remember. I actually don't know. I'll have to look that up. I thought it was well, pretty the, soon. The public comment it's stuff ends soon. It might already be over. Yeah, it's over. But uh, next like, week is what this says, and this was posted this week. Um, so next week is when they're closing comments on their open internet post. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, that that said, they'll probably not rule for another few weeks. Yeah. So we got probably. a while, so keep calling your congressman. <laughs> fight uh, the good yeah, fight. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Anyway, next thing. <laughs> next thing. <laughs> All right, next topic. Um, Intel. They make great things. Kind of. Yes. Kind of. Intel, <laughs> Intel has finally released their new enthusiast platform, uh, X99. Um, for those of you who know what this is, basically they released the X79 platform about five years ago. And it was great and it was powerful and it could do a bunch of cool stuff when it launched. But 
it hasn't been refreshed for five years. And so the mainstream Intel stuff has actually had a lot more features and in some cases was even more powerful. So they just launched Damn. X99 and three new CPUs, uh, which is awesome because with the three new CPUs, Intel's line actually makes sense again. Because with the <laughs> enthusiast level, uh, you start at six cores now. Um, instead of starting at four, like you did with the last gen enthusiast stuff, which, which is awesome, never made sense. So you have two six core CPUs and one eight core CPU. The eight core is a thousand fifty dollars. It's eight cores and 16 threads and unbelievably powerful. Um, so this is really awesome because we're getting support for, uh, a lot more PCI express lanes for graphics cards and things like that in computers, as well as. Uh, th- uh, native Thunderbolt support for if you want to have if you're like a content creator, video editor who wants Thunderbolt external support, and that's native to the processor. A uh, bunch of really uh, high-end storage options like uh, PCI Express SSDs and uh, SATA Express, uh, which is much faster than current SATA because SATA's yeah. kind of been lagging behind a little bit. So these are expensive parts, like the cheapest motherboards I've seen that support these are have been like four hundred dollars. And the cheapest processor in this enthusiast line is three hundred and eighty dollars with the mid range one being five hundred and ninety. And then, like I said, the high end one being one thousand and fifty. But if you're a content creator, like video editor, audio uh, person, uh, 3D animator, anything like that. These are the parts you're going to want. If you're just a gamer, um, you're paying a lot of money for just. stuff that you're probably not going to use. So just stick it's to the main pretty much future proofing at that point. Yeah, like. exactly. So if you're just gaming, stick to the mainstream stuff. It's a lot less expensive and gives you all the performance that you're going to need or be able to use for a while. Um, but uh, if you're going to be doing content creation or you just want a computer that you aren't going to have to upgrade for two to three to even five years if you go really high end right now this is what you're going to want but you will spend a lot of money for it um yeah and before i forget one of the main new additions with this uh this platform and these processors is native ddr ddr4 ram support so they support the newest type of ram which operates at much lower power levels and much higher frequencies giving you a lot better performance and it also gives you the ability to have more ram so uh, that's going to be really awesome because if you're a content creator, the more RAM, the better, but I'm yeah. really excited for this. I've already planned out a build as soon as I have about four grand that I can drop. <laughs> uh, I'll put one together. <laughs> I've Which been, you've been talking about builds and such for computers for the last like four years now. What was that? I have something in the savings. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I was just giving you crap because you're always talking about the new build you have set up. Yeah, well, uh, when you're building a really expensive build, uh, it takes you a while to save, and there's a lot of things that change. So you constantly yeah. change to the new thing. And like, well, one day I'll get it. By the time I have enough saved, who knows? They might be on the new enthusiast platform, and I'll have to redo that. But for now, this is what I'm looking at, and I'm really excited for it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm kind of in the same boat um, doing YouTube and all this stuff. So I was kind of like, I need something and I want it to be fairly future proof and it's going to get the editing done. So I'm kind of like, great, new stuff. Yay. Like, it, it's hard to make a build and make it again and then make it again and just continue yeah. to do that. But as your wallet starts hurting already. But do you think this with, will ever be platform, like, remember the movie Up where... They're spending the whole movie saying, oh, we're going to go to this place. And they save up their whole lives to go on this big, <laughs> amazing trip. But keep, things keep happening. And then at the end, he looks back and realizes that the biggest adventure of all was living life with his beloved wife. In this he, case, your crappy computer. Yeah. yeah you know, my best adventures yeah, were with my that, piece that. of shit. 100 meg hard drive that couldn't hold a word document uh, i don't know yeah that sounds a little a little too familiar it's a little too close to home but eventually I, I plan on having one of these things okay um yeah but um if you guys if you guys that are listening want to find out more about this stuff uh I recommend checking out uh, two YouTube channels. Linus Tech Tips uh, has got some really good good. coverage on the new X99 stuff as well as the new processors and just tech stuff in general. 
and then Tech Syndicate, uh, some really cool guys. Uh, they cover a lot of this stuff. They go really in depth. They're really, really smart when it comes to PC stuff. And they actually have some information about like the net neutrality and stuff that we were talking about earlier. So I'd check out those guys as well to get a little bit more in depth into the tech stuff. And they definitely will have you covered with information that you want to want to find out. They're great channels. Definitely recommend checking them out. Um, Intel also brought out their uh, Broadwell um, CPUs, which are their form factor stuff. And apparently they can run in a normal laptop and keep it at eight millimeters, which is crazy small for a laptop and have no fan. Like, it's just oh, crazy what they're able to do. I did not hear about the new Broadwells coming out. I knew about them, but I hadn't yeah. heard much about them yet. Like, uh, I think they announced them just not too long ago um, and they're pretty intense. I'm like, that'll make the tablet uh, PC game kind of different. Yeah, tablet. They have to have so much shit. Yeah, if they're if they're able to work really well fanless, then tablets and laptops could get even more powerful, thinner and quieter, which would be really well, awesome. Well, they're hitting like pretty like i7 levels right now with the Broadwell. So I'm kind of like, holy crap, that's going to be intense. Huh. So that's really so interesting. just to throw this out there, and this is for listeners as much as the people in the room. And am, am I the only one who has just a major problem with tablet PCs on sheer fact that most of them only have one USB port? Yeah, that's that's a problem. That yeah. can be an issue depending on what you're doing. I mean, you can get a USB three hub, like say if you got yeah. the Surface Pro three, you can get a USB three hub, and that'll be able to give you mostly what you need. But if you're like wanting it to be just like an absolute workhorse that you're doing work on and you've got a bunch of peripherals, get a laptop. It's still the best way to go uh, if you have to be portable. Um, yeah. But oh, for sure. I definitely it just, I like the Surface It's just Pro one of those things where it's like, like that. I, I could just use one more, you know, just allow me a mouse plus a memory stick, you know. <laughs> use, use Bluetooth mouse. That that would be nice without a secondary peripheral. <laughs> Yeah, no, um, I, I can see it being good for gaming, um, especially with like the, the shield tablet and that kind of thing coming out once internet gets better. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like this once. W w with like gaming PCs as they are, they're pretty heavy. A lot of them, um, yeah. and the ones that aren't are like three thousand dollars. So it's like, yeah, all right. Um, I see it changing a lot with that. Yeah. So you can finally get something to at least game on high. That's fairly form factor. Yeah, that would be that would be nice. But and I think you're right. I think with with that, if they're able to get that level of performance in a fanless design, then we're probably going to see that probably within the next year, year and a half. Yeah, definitely. OK. All right. Woo. Into the next stuff. Well, we have. Yeah, I was going to say we have we have a lot more tech announcements to go over, specifically in the realm of smartphones. I mean, obviously, the iPhone six is the big one. But uh, Jason, I think you had a few others you wanted to talk about. Yeah. So iPhone six got announced yesterday at the time of recording this. Uh, we're recording on the 10th. <laughs> so um, ninth, the iPhone six got announced. And then a little before that, it IFA, which you can look up what that stands for because I can't pronounce it, um, but it's where a lot of smartphones get announced every year. Samsung announced the Samsung Galaxy Note 4 and the Samsung Galaxy Edge. Um, the Samsung Galaxy Note 4 is basically uh, a bit more powerful Note 3 with, uh, I think it's same size screen, but it has a metal casing this time, which is really nice. Uh, one of the main differences is that the screen on the Note 4 goes to uh, 2,560 by 1,440 pixel resolution. Yeah. So that's a 2K resolution instead of 1920 so by 2K monitor, um, which is really awesome. I don't necessarily think that it's needed on a screen that size because having that many more pixels will drain battery faster, which I'm a little yeah. concerned about because... On a on a 5.7 inch screen, which is what the notes have, 1920 by 1080 resolution is still unbelievably pixel dense. Even holding yeah. it right up against your face, you probably aren't going to notice. So going to this new resolution, while kind of cool, I don't know if it's actually going to give you a noticeable difference. 
especially one that's noticeable enough to justify a slightly lower battery life, which is already kind of annoying on some smartphones. But yeah. overall, it looks like a great phone, and I like the Samsung phones uh, a little bit. I don't like their uh, uh, user interface very much, but the phone itself I really like. And then there was the Note Edge, which was the more interesting one. It basically seems like a Samsung Galaxy Note 3 in terms of specs, like the the screen resolution and everything. But there's a little tiny screen on the edge of the phone. Like, it, oh, yeah. it runs along okay. the entire side of the phone, and it can act as, like, your notification center or quick launch actions that you can do there. But then there's still the regular screen, but you've just got, like, a side of the phone is the screen. It's hard to explain, and... We'll have a picture for it so everybody can see what I'm talking about and that I'm not absolutely out of my mind. <laughs> um, it's really interesting. I th no, he's just out of his I mind. I think it can be really useful. I would like to see the phone have a like better specifications overall and have that and have a metal build because the no edge they left the metal build out of, which is kind of annoying because I really like that. Um, yeah. But they both look like really good phones depending on what you want and if you like uh, Samsung devices. Um, and then Sony also announced a new, new Sony Xperia Z3, which, uh, looks freaking almost exactly uh, like the Z2 with a slightly higher, uh, gigahertz processor. I think they upgraded the camera a little bit, which is awesome because Sony's smartphones have great cameras. But other than that, I didn't really see that much of a difference. So if you have a Sony Xperia Z2... I would tell you, do not upgrade. If you want a Sony smartphone, get the Z3 because it's a little better. But it wasn't that amazing like I was hoping it would be. But um, for anyone that doesn't own a PS Vita, um, they actually have the uh, screen share thing. I don't. It's like their cloud service thing. That's, um, that's true. That actually can run through the. Yeah, I it forget does, what it's called. It can. It can uh, do in-home game streaming from your PlayStation 4 and stuff like that, which yeah. is really cool uh, if you want to take advantage of things like that. So the Sony smartphones are awesome for that. Um, yeah. And plus they're really good phones. They ha they're they water and dust proof and stuff like that. So they're overall really good phones. They just didn't upgrade it as much as I would have liked. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, there's the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6 Plus, which is basically just the larger screen size. It's literally just a bigger phone. Oh, and, yeah, and it has better forget. resolution, which is nice. <laughs> um, but other than that, the iPhone 6s were a colossal disappointment to me because I was actually thinking about possibly switching to an iPhone this time if they made enough changes. And to me, they really didn't. They have a new processor, the A8, which is faster than the previous one and a really yeah. good processor. And that was about the only real thing they upgraded. They had... They added near-field communication, which is the thing that's going to let you, like, program your credit cards into the phone and yeah. use the phone to pay for things. Android's had that for two yeah. years, though. Um, so they yeah, didn't really... Like, I looked at a... I saw a chart online today that my cousin had posted, actually, and, like... It had a Nexus 4, which is a two-year-old phone, but was pretty standard in the day. And the iPhone 6 next to it, they were the same size, same screen size, same feature list. And one was standard two years ago. So it's just like, yeah, yeah. iPhone's a bit behind, I feel like. And that's well, what, what was I was really funny to me is the big announcement was the iPhone watch. Or not the iPhone yeah. watch, but like the, the yeah. Apple the Apple Why do watch. we need it? Like, why? I, here's the thing. I, why do we need it? It's three hundred and fifty dollars. It's basically an iPod. The, <laughs> why is that their big focus now? Okay. When they could have had such I a huge like, announcement with the six. I like smartwatches. My whole thing with the, with the watch, the smartphone pairing. I, I I think the smartwatch thing is destined to fail because you've already. <laughs> I disagree. It's it's too small for the regular touchscreen paradigm. Like touch touch phones are just about the right size for your fingers to manipulate things. But when you get shrink the size to about a quarter of that, you end up with 
the UI elements are just too damn small to do anything useful. So you have to make it do less at any one point in time. See, or I have <laughs> or to at dis- the very least make it have physical buttons again. See, I yeah, have, and then, then a lot of people complain. Oh, well, this is 2015, you know, or whatever. It's like, why do we have physical buttons? I, I have to you disagree know? with I you on the smartwatches. I do too. Yeah. Fail. I have to disagree with that. I love smartwatches. I definitely think they're going to take off. They, the reason why they work, because uh, normally you'd be right about the UI elements being too small uh, in order to use, but. We're getting to the point where you don't even need to use a touchscreen on the smartwatches because you have motion, uh, like gesture support and things like that, and voice control with uh, Microsoft has Cortana, uh, Apple has Siri, and Google has Google Now. So you're getting to the point where you don't even need to touch anything. I really like smartwatches. The problem with the Apple smartwatch that I have is it's $350, which you can get better... uh, better functionality and better looks out of smartwatches that already exist and work on Android and Apple devices. Um, that's my main issue is it's a ridiculous price for not as much functionality as some smartwatches already have. The only cool thing they've added to the smartwatch is again, NFC near field communication. So you can pay with your watch instead of your phone, which I hope Android devices will add that to their smartwatches. Cause that actually is a cool feature, but that's, the only reason, like the only cool feature that the Apple Watch has, and I don't think that's worth an extra hundred to one hundred and fifty dollars over other smartwatches. I just want to ask, why don't we have Pip Boys? Where's my Pip Boy? Yes, I want one. <laughs> With fully functional VAT system. Give it to me now. <laughs> See, I'm just waiting for the day. Actually, you could make a homemade Pip Boy by just making like a wrist holder for your phone. Well, I guess that's, you could. that's what I wonder. Why don't people do that? I mean, you could even put an extra battery. Uh, you could even put USB peripherals on there as long as it would just dock with something on your wrist. Because then you would have a place to put your phone. You wouldn't need an extra watch. They're small enough. Small pockets are no longer a problem. Yeah, well, I I don't know. I just always one of the reasons that wasn't the one of the reasons they're, people they're... don't do that is because it looks ridiculous. That's one of the good things about the newer smartwatches is the newer smartwatches actually look classy <clears throat> and like you're not wearing a piece of plastic uh, children's jewelry on your arm. That's why people like current smartwatches that like the functionality is because they're finally starting to look really nice like the moto 360 which is the current one that i'm well, probably planning on picking up yeah the thing is though like if you're going for a classy look take that 350 dollars, get yourself an automatic invicta you'll be able to tell the time you'll never have to wind it and it will keep just as good a time and then you still have your phone and people are like oh you wear a regular watch that's Ooh, interesting you must be classy well, no that's really a big thing is people wear regular analog watches because it says something very specific about the way they work and about how classy they are yeah. <laughs> well and then you talk about how it just looks ridiculous you know wearing well it's just think about anything changes i mean you think why does a watch sized thing look okay on yours i mean if you think about before there were watches that must have looked weird for people to be wearing that. So, I mean, I really yeah. think that... Kind of like I, how uh, the belt chains looked fine, but it was to a pocket watch. I, I think anything, eventually the functionality is going to win out. It's just, it probably, like you said, it probably will take a long time before that happens. Well, yeah. and, that's and true. The band I mean, remember doesn't... when people thought it was j- douchey to just wear your Bluetooth in all the time, yeah. and now I see it all the friggin' it's time? It's still super douchey. Those people just have accepted that fact. <laughs> Are you I accept words? that I am a douche. <laughs> <laughs> but, but eventually, kids are going to grow up and see that, and it's normal behavior. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, hey, Garrick's still on the, the pit boy. He's going to build one in the next week. Okay, okay. I don't know what that word means. Oh, it's from Fallout. It's Fallout. Okay, what is it? Uh, it's basically a smartwatch, but that takes up your whole wrist. So it's an Omni tool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. you have to translate that into words I can understand. <laughs> so we're, so but, we have to translate to math. Speaking of tools, Microsoft. <laughs> ah. I, it's, a, it's a segue. It's funny tie-in. <laughs> um, Microsoft is in talks with purchasing Mojang for what, $2 billion? 
Yep, two billion dollars. What do we think? Is it going to destroy Minecraft as we know it, or could this possibly be an improvement? I want updates. Thoughts? Where's my 2.0? Anyone. So I will start. Um, I don't think it will have a very profound effect. I was, I'm a little like, I doubt it will happen, but because it's being bought by Microsoft, Sony just barely got Minecraft. I'm like, well, what Microsoft possibly be like, oh, Sony, by the way, you don't get Minecraft anymore. We're cutting that off. Obviously, that's probably not going to happen, but I don't really think it's going to change Minecraft all that much. I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of the people who are working on it now that transfer over and continue working on it. So we'll still get a pretty Except for not. talent pool. Yes, we won't get Notch. He's already said that he probably won't stay with Mojang if the cell goes through. So he, we won't have him, which will really kind of suck since it basically was his. Yeah, but he already left, I think it was like towards uh, 1.4 to left. do scrolls and That's stuff true. like that. So I'm just kind of like, why does it matter? That's true. What they might do, Even which though... they actually have kind of a history in different games that you can see where companies have done this, was basically just making sure that Xbox always gets the updates first and then the PlayStation consoles will get them after that. That's Much something like that could Call very well happen. Exactly. <laughs> don't know if they will, but it could. I, I don't know. I don't really think... Well, it's interesting to me that this it. announcement is coming on the heels of an announcement that says that... Um, that Xbox's Minecraft update isn't going to be for a while for various reasons, and then all of a sudden, hey, what if we just buy Mojang? Hmm. <laughs> then we yeah. can throw money at it, because that fixes all of our problems. <laughs> well, it fixes yeah, most it of does. Them. If you're Microsoft. I watched, um, yeah. what was it? Uh, the Philip DeFranco Phil, show today. Yeah, he brought up just... a good point in that Microsoft is a company, being a huge company, is there to make money. That's their job. That is their business. Whereas Mojang's is to make a good game. It was to make Minecraft better and to continue its, you know, life cycle. I, I kind of see that maybe playing a part. It could change the game for better or for worse in ways of getting rid of PS support or, you know, that kind of thing. Or some weird thing like that. Yeah. But it, you're right. It could benefit them because now that it, it, if it the sale goes through... And they are kind of under the Microsoft umbrella where Microsoft is a good business. As much as some people hate some of the things they do, they make money. They make yeah. product and they are very good <laughs> at it. That could benefit Minecraft by being like, hey, we have all this money that we can use now to get more developers and add more stuff and make the game uh, even better than it currently is. Um, as yeah. long as they don't try to grow too quickly, that could be a really good thing. I also wonder if they're going to try and start their um, own kind of like well, servers in a way. So hopeful for the future, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm definitely looking forward to Notch's next project. Anyway, Will Ferrell uh, oh, is going yeah. to be playing. <laughs> yes, <Speaking of> tools. <laughs> yes, more tools. Uh, <laughs> Will Ferrell will be raising money for cancer research. They're calling it Will Ferrell's Super Mega Blast Max Gamer Challenge on Indiegogo. <laughs> They're looking to uh, earn $375,000 to go toward cancer proceeds. And the grand prize winners will be uh, able to go play... Uh, video games with Buddy the Elf of the Elf movies. <laughs> um, oh God, no, no! They're, it's not just Will Ferrell. It's it's the character from Elf. Yes, no. Yes. <laughs> that sounds awful. God, why would anyone want that? Why is that a reward? <laughs> that sounds awesome. <laughs> that Twitch stream yeah, is gonna get that 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 millions of people. That sounds yeah. terrible. It sounds great. But yeah, like every donation gets you a uh, gets your name in the drawing. So. Oh, is, there, is there any way to like get negative drawing points just to make sure I'm as far can, away from that? Can possible you um, request and be like, if I donate seventy five thousand dollars, can I play it with Anchorman instead? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. That okay, I would totally pay for that. But um, <laughs> Ron, no, I, 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 I see this. Yes. I see this as a good shift in gaming. Um, you see this a lot on Twitch now too. Um, I know Markiplier does. Uh, charity streams all the time. I think it's every month now. Um, and just like a whole bunch of YouTubers or Twitch streamers and 
uh, even companies getting together. I think it was um, it was St. Jude's Hospital and Twitch and Amazon all together um, were holding a fundraising for charity back not too long ago for the child's children's research. So I, I see it as a good shift in people trying to do better with games and yeah. creating kind of a good image. Yeah, I, I agree. Cause you are seeing that a lot more now. Like you said, a lot of the Twitch streamers and stuff. I know uh, multiple times throughout the year, Rooster Teeth does like an extra life 24 hour yeah, stream do, um, uh, as part of that. Operation. Um, uh, what is it? There was operation, operation supply drop, some different things. They yeah, did multiple yeah. different ones. So uh, a lot of the better people that are in gaming or gaming companies, or anything like that are really doing some good stuff with it, which is awesome to see because as part of this community, like there's a lot of great people, but a lot of times you forget that because it gets overshadowed by just really, really eight year olds, bad <laughs> eight year olds, just jackasses in general. And you forget that there's really good people out there doing good stuff that you actually want to be friends with and want to, to consider yourself as part of the same community with. And it's really easy to forget that when you see some of the stuff that happens occasionally. Yeah. Um, I know like through doing, you know, my YouTube stuff, I know that I've met, you know, at least a good handful of people that I'm like, these, I, these people I can call friends. These are people that if I needed something, I could probably ask them and it would be cool. Like, you know, it, it's good to know that there's a community to go to. Well, and I find it kind of funny that, uh, it's just it's it's bridging the gap it's using computer games or bridging the gap between like this i mean it's will it's will freaking feral right yeah. and it's like well I, I just i just think it's hilarious that you'll see these people getting on you know these supposed famous people getting on and just <laughs> palling around with normal people because they are normal people you know and it's just, it's just kind of cool that it's sort of eroding this fake image and it's like everyone is just realizing Oh yeah, everyone's you know just yeah. the yeah. same level. Yeah. You know, the, the <laughs> heroes. Cool. A lot of people's heroes nowadays are people who are just people. Yeah, and that's why they're the heroes now. It's like this guy's doing really well, but he's just a normal yeah. guy. Yeah, like instead of I these this god whole, figures. This whole like silver screen thing is just it's crumbling. Away. I love it. <laughs> yeah, which is Man. good. I think in the long run, it's gonna be really good. <laughs> So it's, yeah, if you want to play video dirty, games with Buddy the Elf, oh boy. <laughs> go contribute. Yeah. <laughs> Indiegogo. I can see the aneurysm in Justin's head. Yeah. Just, I'm going to donate just so I can, so I can be like, so please let this happen. This A needs to be on YouTube. YouTube. No, shut up. <laughs> uh, okay, well... <laughs> All right. Well, that is pretty much your weekly news, your weekly update, and all of our random thoughts regarding it. So, uh, um, we should do an introduction since we did it in the beginning of us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's true. We didn't. We should do that now. I was going to introduce you in the intro. So, <laughs> yeah, you guys didn't introduce we'll fix me. It in we'll post. Fix it in post. Just calm your tits, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. We'll just do it. Okay, it's happening. Thanks for listening. I'm Savannah. I'm Jason. <laughs> Justin here. You better get a good picture. I'm Jason. And now... <laughs> and special guest... Special guest is Garrig, also known as Hegrig. Follow his channel. And I'm Garrig. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> it's your YouTube channel. Yeah, uh, check out the YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash or no, I'm gonna, user I'm gonna put it slash tribus studios. I'm going to put a link below It'll because pop that's up how on much the screen, I love you. Because I know it. I, I know Savannah will be cool. When you say there's going to be a, stuff a, links a, right? to the phone, right? you're, like, you're, like, you're actually living inside the screen. I am. Going, it's this down is where I live. We're off the road. I live in YouTube. I mean, there's See everybody next week. Thanks for listening to End User Input. See you next week. Bye. Okay, bye. bye everybody.